Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz in Sacramento, our Capitol Bureau. We are joined today by Melanie Mason. She is a reporter with the Los Angeles Times in Sacramento and other places. Yes. Tell us about your travels over the last few months. Sure. So, yes, I'm based here in Sacramento. I usually cover California politics, but as this presidential race has been heating up, I've sort of hopped over to the national team. Nice. And um, so I've been on the trail. So I actually spent about two weeks in Florida in advance of the Florida primary nice. and uh, now sort of figuring out where, where the next place right. is to go. So let's talk about what you hear on the trail, because I think you really have a unique insight as as a reporter, you know, there's lots of talk about ISIS or the minimum wage or whatever it may be, but day in and day out, people are thinking about other things. At least that's what you've learned. Absolutely. I mean, they're thinking about their pocketbook. Right. I mean, that is, you know, when you, the first thing people say when you ask them, um, what are you looking for in this election? Mm -hmm. What do you want to hear from the candidates? It's the economy and its jobs and its health care, which is something that I think um, is not particularly surprising because it affects everyone and everyone has a personal story. Uh, but I was really struck with how much the conversations that we were hearing in California when I was covering the legislature, sure. you're then hearing on the campaign trail from people in Florida and other states as well. And is the tone different in California when people are talking about health care, a state where, for better or for worse, the Affordable Care Act has been successful? Yes, I think absolutely. I mean, I think that when I was in Florida, Florida is a particularly interesting state because you have a governor who chose not to right. expand Medicaid under uh, the Affordable Care Act, like mm -hmm. California has done. Right. California really embraced the Affordable sure. Care Act. Uh, so you're hearing a lot more negative comments about Obamacare from voters, particularly Republican primary voters who huh. I tended to be talking to right. more. But when it comes to the actual kind of day in, day out sort of nitty gritty of healthcare, a lot of the issues are the same. Uh, so one of the things I heard a lot about was prescription drug prices. So our viewers know my wife has Crohn's and colitis. I'm not sure if I've told our viewers this, but she takes a shot once a month. It's absolutely necessary. Uh, the cost is $22,000 for one shot, $22,000. Now, fortunately we have insurance but it's still a tough pill to swallow or rejection to take at $22,000. It's a story you've heard all year. Absolutely, and everyone knows someone, even if it doesn't affect them. Right. And uh, your, your wife's condition is actually sort of um, kind of indicative of the trends that we're seeing nationwide in that what we've seen in, is a spike in, in drug prices, particularly for specialty drugs, for conditions that don't uh, affect a huge number of people, but for the people that it does affect, you're seeing prices climb at really significant percentages. Think about Hep C. This past year, Hep C, these drugs have come out that literally cure Hep right. C, but I understand their prices are quite high. I have to ask you, though, and by the way, uh, Melanie wrote an article about this in the LA Times. It was outstanding. Uh, it uh, was filed a few weeks back, but you did mention, I do want to ask you about the Turing Pharmaceuticals case. That's the case of Martin Scarelli, who bought the company and increased the drug price for one particular medication by 5,000%. Right. I mean, this is this is kind of the um, the bad boy right. of the pharma. Child. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and in fact, if you talk to the pharmaceutical industry, they'll say he's he's an outlier. He's not even really a, a sort of representative of what the pharma pharmaceutical industry mm -hmm. is like. He was really almost a Wall Street guy who came in, scooped up this company, and then jacked up the price of the drugs. What pharma will say, um, and they have a point, is that they are investing tremendous amounts of money in research and development for these drugs. And these drugs, when they work, like this hepatitis C drug that you mentioned, they can have really astounding results. They can cure hepatitis C. But the question is, at what at what cost? These hepatitis C drugs, they run over $100,000 for a course of treatment. Uh, and hep C is an interesting case because now we're moving out of the realm of really specialty drugs. I mean, Three million people are affected by hepatitis That's C. That's, That's a real number. That's about 1% number. of the American population. Exactly. And right. a lot of them, um, there's, a, there's a pretty significant crossover with folks who are on Medicaid. Medicaid, for example, or Medicare. So that's a lot of state governments that are then having to pony up the costs for the, these drugs. And so now the question is, when you have these high specialty drugs and the state is, has to bear these costs, you can really see some budget busters here. And the, the Hep C drug, uh, Sovaldi is its name, Sovaldi, yeah. really was sort of the catalyst of a lot of this conversation. So back in California, I understand that we may see an initiative on the ballot this fall, I think, yes. that would restrict state payments 
to certain levels. Is that accurate? They will only pay to a certain amount? That's right. So this initiative, which actually it has qualified. Yeah. So right now it's set to be on the on the ballot, okay. barring some sort of compromise right. uh, in which All they... minimum wage. Exactly. Right. Uh, we, uh, so that initiative uh, would restrict the state from paying uh, more than what the Department of Veterans Affairs, the VA, pays for drugs. So the VA can negotiate for cost of drugs, and it's estimated that they pay, uh, I think it's about a 20 percent markdown on on the cost of these uh, of these drugs, and so they're saying that sort of saving should be extended to the state uh, as well for other state-funded programs. Are there discussions about the fact that I understand the federal government does not negotiate through its Medicare program? And as a result, they don't get, like, for example, the VA benefit. Absolutely. So that's actually something we've heard from uh, many of the presidential camp, uh, contenders. Both sides? Uh, both sides. So we've heard it from mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. We've also heard it from Donald Trump, which is just this really interesting example of how Donald Trump uh, once again kind of uh, violates Republican orthodoxy. I mean, this is this was a provision that Republicans in Congress had actually explicitly put into the Medicare Part D uh, bill under President Bush, President, uh, right. President George W. Bush, sure. that said that that Medicare cannot uh, negotiate for the What's price of the, drugs. the policy reason behind that? Uh, the policy reason behind that. Well, the, well the, yeah. frankly, there's a question of how much that would actually save. Um, right, you talked about that in your article. Right. I mean, you the, the uh, Congressional yeah. Research Service, or right. actually it's the Office of Management and Budget, right. Budget, had said that it's the savings could actually be negligible unless the federal government basically creates a formulary, decides which drugs they will pay for and which wow. they won't. That gets into really politically dicey territory, because right. then we're talking about... Um, Kind of uh, decided what care we're going to pay for and not, and that's that's when you panel. exactly you start throwing up a lot of alarms. What about discussions? And we hear this often, especially in border states, north or south border, buying drugs from Canada mm -hmm. or Mexico, mm -hmm. not you know literally allowing the importation of these drugs. They're so much cheaper. Well, so you'll hear from the drug companies that uh, we can't assure make assurances about quality um, because we don't have the same strict kind of um, vetting process like we do with the FDA for the Food and Drug Administration. Um, I also talk to health economists who say, look, if you do that, there is there is no reason why the drug companies wouldn't then just change their price to set make it that Canada pays the same price as the, the United States. We are the bigger market. And so if we're going to, um, th th we could be the market driver and then those savings could be lost. So here's the question. Do you have a sense whether voters will put this issue on the top of their checklist when they go to vote in November? And if they do, whom do they like? That's a that's a great question. I think that um, I think that we're still kind of watching this issue develop. I don't think we've quite got to the tipping point yet where we're going to say that's the thing that makes someone pull a lever for one candidate or another. Also, because I don't think that any candidate has really stood out as um, as the single sort of uh, standard bearer for this. Mm -hmm. I mean, candidates talk about it. Hillary Clinton ran an ad in Florida that was just about drug prices, so they know that this is an issue that is that is reaching people. But when I talked to voters and even people who are very well versed in this because they've had these personal situations, they'll say, I still don't know who exactly mm -hmm. has all the answers. Um, so I think that because this is such a complicated economic problem, and I don't think that any one candidate has sort of taken the mantle and really run with it, I don't know if that's going to be determinative for the voters. What about Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act? We know that issue drove out voters in midterm elections, 2010, 2014, didn't do much in 2012, Mr. Obama won. Is that driving the debate at all? Uh, for from Obama in 2016, see. that's a that's a good question. I mean, I think look, I th I I think you'll hear from the Republican candidates, we're going to repeal Obamacare, we're going to replace it with something mm -hmm. better. But look, the political reality is is that now that this this program is pretty baked in, right. and we have not seen a pr particularly well fleshed out policy proposal in terms of replacing it. I think it will be incredibly hard um, for any Republican standard bearer to say, uh, we're going to take this program away and we're not quite sure what we're going to replace it with. You'll come back? I'd love I to. I want to hear more about your travels. Her name is Melanie Mason. She is a reporter with the Los Angeles Times. You can read her articles either in the print edition or online. My name is Brad Palmer. It's in Sacramento, local edition.